Yo, what's going on guys? It is Cynical, and today I thought I'd bring you guys a Kingdom Hearts 3 as well as a Kingdom Hearts 2.5 HD Remix news video. So, sort of quite recently, around about a week back, uh, Game Informer did a interview with Tai Yasui. Now, if you guys don't know who Tai Yasui is, he is uh, Square Enix's co-director, and um, for the, uh, for the um, Kingdom Hearts franchise, basically he is, you know, the co-director of all of that. So he, he plays a pretty important role as far as the development side of the Kingdom Hearts games go. Um, he's currently working on uh, Kingdom Hearts HD 2.5 Remix as well as Kingdom Hearts 3 as well. So basically, uh, quite recently, Game Informer interviewed him talking about questions to do with both, both 2.5 as well as Kingdom Hearts 3. So today I thought I would just basically read out to the questions that Game Informer uh, asked Tai as well as read out the answers that he provided with um, the questions as well. Uh, basically, this information gives us a little bit of info and insight on both, uh, you know, more info to do with, you know, 2.5, uh, such as, you know, like, recoded and stuff, and also a few things to do with Kingdom Hearts 3 as well. If you guys enjoyed today's video, share the love by liking this video, and let's get on with it. Okay, so first up, did you take any fan feedback from Kingdom Hearts 1.5 into account that influenced Kingdom Hearts 2.5? The answer was, actually with 1.5 there weren't a lot of complaints, there usually is, right? But one thing there was, was for more of our Japanese players, was for the theater mode. They wanted more battle scenes. They wanted to see the battle scenes, so we put a lot more battle scenes in Recoded, and we made them have cutscenes. They're not real-time battles, but they actually made out like an action movie, sort of. You get a whole new understanding of the story that way. So basically, the Japanese players, or pretty much all of the players, to, to be honest, the true fans of Kingdom Hearts, were basically wanting to see the actual battle scenes out of 358 over two days, of course, in the redone cinematics and stuff, which is included in 1.5. We really didn't see any battle scenes. Basically, when it came up to a cutscene where the, you know, um, a battle was going to take place, it would skip to the end of the battle, and we're sort of like, okay, what the hell? And for me personally, I was pretty disappointed. I wanted to see Roxas and Shion like fight. Uh, I wanted a whole cutscene, dramatic cutscene, showing that fight. And of course, we didn't get to experience that. The only people who do were the people that played it on the DS. So I think this is um, basically this slice of information right here is really good because it shows us that you know Square Enix are taking in our feedback and whatnot, and as well as that they're basically saying that there is going to be battle scenes in uh, 2.5, and I think that's something to look super forward to. Secondly, I read that with Recoded you added more scenes, and there was one that was going to transition more into Dream Drop Distance. Is that true? The answer was, actually, not the secret. Well, there's actually a secret event at the end, right? But that doesn't transition. Well, actually, how do you know that? It sort of does connect to the other Kingdom Hearts titles, so you get to know about the backstory, how they started maybe, and what happened at the other end, where there was, wasn't really much of an explanation. You get a fuller understanding if you watch it all, it gets added at the very end so you can see that. So there's sort of um, like a missing connection between Recoded and Dream Drop Distance. Uh, basically, um, if you guys don't know, Recoded takes place right after Kingdom Hearts 2 and then Dream Drop Distance takes place right after Recoded. So basically what they're saying is they're adding in this sort of new um, secret sort of cutscene that's going to help better connect the Kingdom Hearts uh, Recoded to all of the other titles, sort of further explain it and stuff and give a bit of better explanation on sort of like what's going on. I think this is really, really good. Um, hopefully though, uh, we get to find out, you know, why Maleficent wanted the data and stuff and I think that's going to sort of come into play with Kingdom Hearts 3, so who really knows. Thirdly, Westerners are going to finally get to play the Final Mix versions of Kingdom Hearts 2 and Birth by Sleep, but outside of that, what other additions are there? The answer was, I think the big thing is Recoded and the Final Mix, because it was really well received in Japan. We really wanted our American and European fan base to play that. There are a lot of boss scenes added, and there are the Mushroom Heartless 13 missions in Kingdom Hearts 2, and a lot of forms added in Kingdom Hearts 2 that should really be enjoyable. Also, for Birth by Sleep, there's a secret episode at the very end where Aqua has an adventure in the Realm of Darkness, and it has a boss and lots of stages, so that should be enjoyable. A lot of the things I loved about Kingdom Hearts were in the Final Mix version. Right now, I'm attempting to fight Roxas. He's very strong, and I'm fighting him in the critical mode. 
which is very difficult, but I get a lot of satisfaction. For the hardcore gamers, I think that would be very enjoyable. You need a lot of strategy, also Lingering Will. The Lingering Will is an armored guy who is a manifestation of terror and birth by sleep. His weapons actually transform into different shapes. A lot of our Japanese players say that this is one of the most intense battles in Kingdom Hearts. And I have to agree with that. The Lingering Will for me is personally my hardest boss fight um, out of the series. But basically, what he's saying here, he's just going over the different features that are pretty much included uh, in the Final Mix versions of the game. And what we have to look forward to differently to the people that haven't experienced the Final Mix versions of both you know, Kingdom Hearts 2 and Birth by Sleep. For me personally, I have played through Final Mix. Uh, the Final Mix version of Kingdom Hearts 2, and I really, really did enjoy it. There's a lot of uh, extra content in there that I can say that for the people who haven't played Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix, you guys are going to enjoy it. There's like the Cavern of Remembrance, like you mentioned, uh, the Mushroom 13. There's, um, you know, new boss fights, new Keyblades, of course, a new form. There's a lot of new synthesis items, so I think that's really, really cool. Lots of new extra content. Um, then, of course, Birth by Sleep Final Mix. I haven't yet played that, so that's going to be a real great new experience for me when I play it in 2.5. And then, of course, I recoded, finally being able to watch the battle scenes and stuff. And, of course, everything sort of redone. I think it's going to look absolutely amazing. And definitely that extra scene at the end that's going to better help connect recoded to the rest of the games. Next up, the multiplayer for Birth by Sleep isn't going to be included. Why was that decision made? The answer was, that's right, we get that a lot. We didn't get that much feedback from like that from our Japanese players, but I guess in the European and American market, I think multiplayer is important, so we did take that into consideration. But for the Mirage Arena, we took our schedule into consideration. We were actually developing Kingdom Hearts 3 and 2.5 at the same time, and it's very difficult. There was a point where we wanted to switch our resources to Kingdom Hearts 3 and get that moving faster, so we didn't put any multiplayer in. But we actually left the Mirage Arena world so you can enjoy the stage using the single player mode. We readjusted the battles and enemies for single player. We added a game specific rule where there's a challenge mode for each battle that wasn't in the original multiplayer mode and you get bonus medals for that and also the AI. We tweaked that especially the ones at the end. The end AI are more complex, intelligent and quicker. Also there were a lot of long battles and in single player mode that can get stressful so we adjusted that so it doesn't take that much time they're shorter battles but more advanced so basically guys um if you guys don't already know this the mirage arena was a sort of multiplayer uh, mini game world which you could visit in birth by sleep and it was a world where you could go to and basically team up with three other friends and you could go into this arena and basically uh fight waves of uh Heartless and then eventually get to an end of this one arena and then you'd fight a boss and when you'd finish that arena you get medals and stuff You can use those medals on different uh, abilities in the like arena shop and stuff And then you could unlock more harder arenas etc etc right um, So a lot of people were thinking you know you know is the Mirage Arena going to return to birth by sleep in 2.5 And is it going to be multiplayer are we going to be able to play with our friends on PSN and stuff like that um, So really right here it tells us the answer is no and I covered this before uh, but basically to speed up the process um, of of course you know Kingdom Hearts 3 which is pretty much the main priority when it comes to you know the Kingdom Hearts games um, basically to speed up the process of that they're not including uh, multiplayer into the Mirage Arena however the Mirage Arena is remaining in Birth by Sleep for 2.5 which I think is really really cool because it's a huge part and especially in the Final Mix version as there's two extra Final Mix or I, I believe yeah there's like two extra Final Mix um, arenas uh, in the Final Mix version of Birth by Sleep for the Mirage Arena, so it sort of seems silly for them to fully get rid of the Mirage Arena. So it sounds like they've like sort of adjusted the Mirage Arena, so it's more um, appropriate for single player. Of course, it was a little bit harder in the original Birth by Sleep on the PSP, as it was more intended to be played with multiple players, not just sort of a solo playthrough sort of thing. So um, I think that that's really really cool to see. Um, I'm glad you know the Mirage Arena is actually still in the game. Next up, have you thought of doing anything with Dream Drop Distance, like as a standalone digital HD release, or doing something for the people to experience it who maybe don't own a 3DS? The answer was, we're definitely going to consider it Dream Drop Distance, but we just made it, right? Two years ago, so I don't know. One of the things that we're going to take into consideration is that a lot of titles are now old and people are starting to forget about them. So we put out 2.5 and 1.5, or 1.5 and 2.5 before Kingdom Hearts 3. But Dream Drop Distance was actually really recent. 
so we didn't want to incorporate that into 2.5. We will consider how we're going to do Dream Drop Distance, but there are a lot of things to think about. We don't want to stop progress in Kingdom Hearts 3. That has to move along quickly. So yes, of course, um, a lot of people are wondering, you know, Dream Drop Distance, I mean, you know, in my opinion, I believe that Dream Drop Distance should have been included in 2.5, regardless of whether it was, you know, only two years ago that it was released, that's basically what they're saying. Um, then the reason why I say Dream Drop Distance should be in 2.5 is as far as story importance goes in Dream Drop Distance, I think it's a lot more important to the actual storyline of Kingdom Hearts than Recoded is. So I, I'd be happy if they just took out Recoded and slams in Dream Drop Distance, right? But then again, of course, they'd have to sort of... Uh, fully remake it and readjust it so that it is sort of compatible with PS3 because um, it's a 3DS title and there's a lot of different touchscreen uh, um, sort of capabilities and touchscreen features and stuff to do and integrated with Dream Drop Distance so how they would do that we don't really know um, a lot of people are discussing you know bring Dream Drop Distance HD to the Wii U I think that would probably be you know more easier to sort of work along with make an HD version of Dream Drop Distance putting it on the Wii U because of course the Wii U has all of those touchscreen capabilities and stuff like that but basically at the moment um, they're sort of not really thinking about it they're pretty much like they said considering it which I think that's really really good for me personally I've already played through Dream Drop Distance on my 3DS so I'm not overly too concerned about it but I think it would definitely be cool to see a Dream Drop Distance HD uh, remix Next up, the controls were smoothed out pretty considerably in 1.5. What things are you doing with Birth by Sleep's PSP controls? The answer is, yeah, we actually changed it. Camera-wise, you can use the right stick to move the camera, so that's been readjusted for the PS3. It will feel very natural. I think it's something you won't feel stressed about. People won't even notice it because it's smooth. So if you guys didn't know, of course, Birth by Sleep was a PSP title, and to control the camera, you had to use the... Um, the triggers up the top of the console, um, pretty much like uh, Kingdom Hearts 1, the same thing happened with that, you couldn't use the analog stick to change the camera view, but in 1.5 that got changed, so you can now use the uh, analog stick to change the camera view in Kingdom Hearts 1. I think that's really really cool, um, it's going to be a lot more smoother like it's mentioned here for Birth by Sleep, so yeah, it's really really awesome. Next up, the Kingdom Hearts games are infamous for their ending teasers, I'm guessing that 2.5 would be teasing something into Kingdom Hearts 3. The answer is, I can't really say at this moment. For Kingdom Hearts 2.5, I think everyone has to do with Kingdom Hearts 3. It will connect. The whole experience, the theatre and the story will all connect to Kingdom Hearts 3. I'm not being specific on purpose. Laughs. So with that laugh at the end, I think that pretty much confirms that yes, they are most likely going to add some sort of little secret hinting thing towards Kingdom Hearts 3, um, somewhere in 2.5, maybe if you complete the story mode of each, you know, Birth by Sleep, Kingdom Hearts 2, and watch all the cinematics for Recoded, maybe you'll get some sort of secret ending in the main menu before you choose what game you go to play in 2.5. Um, I can almost guarantee it, like he said, you know, the Kingdom Hearts games are infamous for the ending teasers, so I do believe that we're going to get something um, of course in 2.5. Next up, in 1.5, seeing what trophies were introduced was interesting. Do you know any of them from 2.5 off the top of your head? I've actually covered this in an own separate video, uh, sort of a few days ago, but basically, I'll go over it real quick. Yeah, for 2.5, there's a lot, several actually. For example, there are a lot of easy and difficult ones that we're actually tweaking right now. One of them is anti-form, how many times you become Dark Sora, or how many times in Kingdom Hearts, Mickey comes along, Mickey stays with you. For Kingdom Hearts 2, the gameplay is very diverse, there are a lot of things you can do, so there was a lot of room to make trophies, I think there's a lot more trophies in 2.5 than 1.5, Kingdom Hearts 2 and Birth by Sleep really have a lot of gameplay, basically this is really interesting, I have already talked about it, but I'll quickly briefly go over it, they're talking about um, Antiform becoming a trophy, and like Mickey Summons becoming a trophy, and of course there's going to be more trophies in Kingdom Hearts 2 as well as Birth by Sleep. Um, more so than, you know, 1.5 had for Chain of Memories and Kingdom Hearts 1. So, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Next up, how are things going on Kingdom Hearts 3? The answer is, we've been working full throttle. It's moving along. We've structured our team in a way that the development of 2.5 doesn't impede Kingdom Hearts 3. I'm actually very excited about Kingdom Hearts 3. So, of course, now, basically, you know, with 2.5, they're pretty much just touching it up, adding, you know, the finishing touches. Of course, we've already got a release date for 2.5 coming out in December um, at the end of this year so you know 
that's sort of close coming, right? We're about five months or so away from that. So pretty much, um, you know, Kingdom Hearts, the development team and stuff, it's not going to interfere with the development side of Kingdom Hearts 3. So they're, like they said, working full sort of with Kingdom Hearts 3. I'm hoping that they really are because I'd love to see it come out sometime next year. That'd be awesome. Next up, what are you most excited for? The answer is the technology and creative stuff. There's a lot of stuff we never ever done before. We we have never ever done before. There's a lot that's the same, but there's a lot that's changed. We're moving from a totally different console, a new console. The technology has evolved, it's very new, and everyone is doing a lot of research. And look-wise, it looks amazing as well. We've shown you some of the trailers and teasers. There are a lot of Disney themed attractions, so that's exciting as well. It's very exciting for me, and I want to tell you more about it, but I really can't at this moment. Um, of course, you know, he's excited because uh, because of the fact that, you know, Square Enix are working with a whole new sort of uh, new technology, basically, especially for Kingdom Hearts. Um, you know, they've worked on uh, the next generation consoles and stuff like that with Final Fantasy, so they are familiar with it. But as far as Kingdom Hearts go, you know, Kingdom Hearts has never ever been on a next-gen console. So this is definitely something new for the development side of Kingdom Hearts, especially because of the fact that it's on new hardware and stuff. Next up, I know some of the fans were disappointed. They were hoping for some sort of trailer or the teaser or or teaser for Kingdom Hearts 3 during E3. The answer is I understand that, but this year it was the year for 2.5 for us. When we were first planning out Kingdom Hearts 3, we wanted 1.5 and 2.5 out in a timely fashion, so everyone would really get an understanding of the story. And so, we really wanted to push 2.5. Making teasers and trailers really does require a lot of work, and we just wanted to get the development moving along quickly on Kingdom Hearts 3. So this year, we've really focused on 2.5. I think this is a especially interesting little like segment right here, and it's a very, very good question. Um, of course, you know, a lot of us were sort of like, oh, you know, oh, damn it, those feels, the Kingdom Hearts feels. We didn't get any new trailer sort of thing, new, new gameplay. I mean, we did get that sort of uh, brief sort of sort of teaser thing to do with Kingdom Hearts 3 with, you know, young Xehanort and young Master Eriquist, supposedly, um, at the end of that 2.5 E3 trailer, which was cool. But as far as, like, getting some sort of new information, new features, new trailer, we, we didn't get that at E3 this year. But like you mentioned, it was the year for 2.5, but he did say that this year is the year for 2.5. So I believe, you know, he's saying this is the year, this year right here is the year for 2.5. So that sort of gives me hope and leads me to believe that next year is going to be the year for Kingdom Hearts 3. They've already got all of the other titles out of the way. Um, we're not going to include Dream Drop Distance. But they've already got all the other titles out of the way. So I believe that next year is going to be the year for Kingdom Hearts 3. Lots and lots and lots and lots of information comes out about it. Um, so next year should be a good year for it. Next up, where can the fans, when can fans anticipate more information on Kingdom Hearts 3? Are you going to wait until next E3? The answer is, we are planning, we are coming up with ideas for game shows, etc. I can't really say which ones at this moment. And of course, you know, guys, E3 is not the only gaming sort of uh, event um, of the of the year. There's uh, the Tokyo Game Show, D23, and of course, you know, uh, there is a Kingdom Hearts uh, t uh, trailer named the D23 trailer, which came out at the D23 event last year. So of course, you know, there's the Tokyo Game Show, the D23, there's, there's, there's more. So there's plenty more opportunity this year for Square Enix to show off Kingdom Hearts 3. So I believe that we are probably going to get something else this year, possibly. Next, the last trailer we saw showed off Disney attractions as part of Sora's special attacks. Has anything been expanded off that since then? In reply, for the rides, we want it to be very varied. For anything in Kingdom Hearts, there's a lot. For those attractions, we want different types, many types, so we're thinking about that. So of course, basically, if you guys haven't already seen it, and you guys should have, because hey, you guys are interested in Kingdom Hearts, you guys will know about the D23 uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer. It's probably the best trailer we have so far regarding Kingdom Hearts 3, and of course, it showed off the Disney attraction um, sort of special attacks, which basically Sora sort of is on one of the Disney sort of theme park rides, and he uses that for offense and stuff like that. Um. The two attraction rides that we've seen so far is of course the pirate ship that sways back and forth and back and forth and then eventually it will do like a 360 spin. Um, and that's 
based off the actual theme park ride itself, which is really cool. Uh, and then of course the other one is like Big Magic Mountain or something, which is like a train and we saw it sort of just like driving around the Rock Titan, sort of maneuvering around it, doing attacks every so often. So of course Square Enix, um, you know, they're super creative and um, like they said, they want a lot of different types, whether they're ones that give you an aerial advantage, speed advantage, some that uh, more area of effect damage sort of things. They're basically wanting a whole varied array of different types of attraction rides. I believe that these attraction rides are going to replace summons. So basically instead of summoning, you know, the traditional D Disney characters, we're going to be summoning the Disney rides. Next, were you paying attention to fans' feedback from that trailer, specifically about the attractions? In response, yeah we are, it was well received. The exact look is not going to be the same at be the same as that. We're really working on our engines and everything. I think people were excited and it felt very Disney. I think that was one of the good points, like creating Disneyland's gameplay wise. I think we'll focus on making different varied versions of that. So of course, you know, they're implementing this, uh, these, these attractions because they want the game to feel even more Disney. Of course, you know, Disney is a huge part of Kingdom Hearts. Um, it plays a major role uh, within the Kingdom Hearts universe. And of course, I suppose getting these Disney attractions is a way of linking more Disney to the game. Of course, these rides come from the actual Disney World of Disneyland itself. So that's, you know, making the game even further more Disney, which I have to say, go for because they look freaking awesome. Next up, I know we'll be visiting new worlds, but will you still have some old iconic ones in Kingdom Hearts 3? In response, it's going to be a mix. Whenever we come up with worlds for Kingdom Hearts, we want to have them varied. You don't want the same type of world, so we'll have different categories that will make it feel fresh, like you're having an adventure. So of course, um, you know, that's the big question, worlds. This is a major topic and discussion point for Kingdom Hearts, and I've done a ton of different sort of world discussion videos, um, but worlds are like a huge sort of draw point. And, um, you know, talking about old iconic worlds, I almost pretty much guarantee that we're going to be seeing uh, Olympus Coliseum and Agrabah return. There's probably going to be a few more, you know, like the traditional, probably, you know, Radiant Garden or Traverse Town, Twilight Town, for instance. They're probably returning. Um, but of course, you know, they're wanting to uh, make new worlds and stuff like that. But talking about, along the lines of the old worlds, um, I can almost guarantee, you know, that we're going to have, we're going to be seeing quite a few of the old worlds. He's already said that there's going to be a mix, so of course that already states that, you know, old ones will be returning. And what I found interesting is, um, he, he named it sort of type of world in different categories. So maybe they're sort of categorizing each world by, uh, this world requires sort of more jumping action, and uh, more exploration, where this one's sort of more, you know, tight, um, sort of more corners and enclosed spaces sort of thing and the other world's more open world sort of you know maybe they're doing that maybe they're doing that sort of thing as far as the categorizing goes but you know who really knows next is disney acquired a lot of new licenses and had movies new movies since the last kingdom hearts up in the potential for new worlds like pixar marvel lucas films etc are you guys looking into those? In response, everyone wants to know. I can't say at this moment, but news will come out about the worlds. There's a lot of Disney content that's new and coming out, and we're considering which ones to use. Which would be good from a gameplay perspective? This is not an announcement or anything, but I personally enjoyed watching Frozen. It was magical, the stories, the songs, the ice expressions. So yes, of course, you know, since the last Kingdom Hearts game, uh, which was Dream Drop Distance, of course, Disney has, um, you know, bring out a lot of new different films and content, and of course they've got these new licenses, which is of course, you know, Marvel, Lucas Films, and stuff like that. And of course, you know, I did a rant video talking about, you know, Star Wars and possibly like Iron Man, the likes of Iron Man getting involved in Kingdom Hearts. I have to disagree with the whole Lucas Films, Marvel sort of uh, participation within Kingdom Hearts. I just feel like, you know, traditional Disney, you know, not really Marvel and Lucasfilms, but that is a completely separate, different video, so hey. Um, but of course, Pixar Worlds and stuff, I say go for, you know, I really want to see like Monsters, Inc. and Toy Story and stuff, and of course, new movies like Tangled, and we've got uh, Frozen, like he mentioned, and even Ty himself, you know, he enjoyed Frozen, and I believe that, you know, Frozen 
is going to probably be like the most guaranteed world in Kingdom Hearts 3. It is super popular, it's probably one of the most all time popular Disney films. Um, it is just blowing people by storm, and honestly, there's so much discussion and talk about Frozen being in Kingdom Hearts 3, you know, fans have even gone to the trouble of making a fan-made, um, sort of, uh, battle theme and all that, um, it's pretty damn good, just YouTube it, guys, honestly, it's so amazing, but, um, I can almost guarantee that Frozen's gonna be in there, but really, you know, like, what worlds do you think, you know, out of Pixar, Marvel, Lucas, what ones do you think are going to be included in Kingdom Hearts 3, that's something to really think about. And lastly, thinking back last year, it was a big moment for Square Enix finally confirming Kingdom Hearts 3. Did you watch any of the fan reaction videos? In response, yeah, it's crazy. We watched all the reaction vi <laughs> reaction videos. Holy shit. My bad. Uh, <laughs> a lot of talking, as you guys can tell. Uh, the development team, the marketing team, that's been a huge boost for morale. Especially the American users. They don't do that in Japan, they're more quiet. We get a lot of our energy from the fan reactions. Watching that, I felt like I needed to make Kingdom Hearts 3 quickly. We were feeling all this pressure, but we're also really excited that everyone's so passionate about it. That reaction, that's why we're making Kingdom Hearts 3. That's the main reason that's most important to us. And of course, guys, if you didn't see it, I mean, honestly, you guys probably have reactions of your own, but holy shit, everyone was super, super, super um, hyped up, you know, when Kingdom Hearts 3 was finally, like, announced and stuff last year, everyone was like, oh my god, and there's some pretty funny reactions out there, I believe Skyward Wing made a, uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 funny reaction compilation, go check his channel out, it's somewhere on there, it's so hilarious though, but honestly, I don't know, it, it's so funny, um, it's good that, you know, obviously Square Enix are getting some sort of, uh, uh, more, you know, like, energy from these reaction videos which is good because it makes them want to you know of course get more motivated and stuff with the production and development line of Kingdom Hearts 3 but anyway guys that is it I hope you guys learned something new there is some you know pretty interesting information there few things to sort of look upon in that batch of different questions that of course Game Informer asked Ty so um, be sure to sort of study those and stuff but if you guys like today's video be sure to share the love by liking this video also, follow me on Twitter for more news and updates. Until next time, guys, I will catch you later. Peace.